Hello, and welcome back to our REST API tutorial series presented by Turbo360. In the previous video, we set up our API route so that it can return some static data which was hard-coded into the route file itself. So, obviously that is not going to be the long-term structure of this project. In this video, we're actually going to take that data and put it into our database, our Mongo database, so that we can return data from our actual persistence layer, which will make the project more realistic and uh, so that we can eventually set up uh, all the requests to interface with our Mongo database. So make sure you have your Mongo set up ready to go and the installation properly uh, finished so that you can follow along with this tutorial series. And, um, and that's it, so let's get started. So here's where we left off in the previous video and I'm going to run the, the, the dev server again just to make sure everything still works. head over to localhost 3000 and here is the home page and let's test the endpoints that we wrote at the end of the last video so here we have our three players in our C data we have our teams and we have the error scenario and we are set to go so now what we want to do is throw all this into our Mongo database so Again, make sure you have Mongo properly installed. I, you can check it right here. I have version 4.0.1. And what I'm going to do is head over to the root directory of the project, and I'm going to create a new directory called seed. And this is where we will store our seed data. So cd into that directory. And let's create two files, teams and players. These are going to be JSON files. So I made a mistake right there. Let's get rid of the mistake. Which will store our original seed data. So we have our players and our teams. So what we want to do is grab the list of players. We have our three JSON objects. And copy that and throw it over into our players, our players JSON file. Now this is just going to be just a set of JSON objects. So we actually don't want it. We don't want these commas. Uh, we just want JSON, pure JSON objects. And we want to throw these keys into double quotation marks like that. So we're formatting our JSON a little bit more uh, in compliance with um, strict JSON rules. So I should have done that to begin with, but it's a, smart, it's a minor adjustment. Just make sure you throw all the keys in double quotations like so. So now we have our, our, our players JSON file set to go which has our, our same three football players from the previous video. So now we want to do the same thing with the teams JSON. So we head over to our teams array in the API.js file and we just do the same thing, pretty simple, and just remove the commas because this is not an array it's just a it's just a set of JSON objects and throw the keys into quotation marks now what we want to do is use these files to to insert data into our Mongo database so this is going to be now inserted into our Mongo database so first thing we need to do is open a new tab in our terminal by doing command T and in here we're going to run our Mongo database by using MongoD. So we need to have a local instance of Mongo running in order to do this. So make sure you do that and you see this line at the end waiting for connections on port 27017. This means your Mongo database is locally running uh, successfully. So now what you want to do next is here we want to use a tool called Mongo import to take this data and this data and throw it into our local Mongo server. So let's go ahead and do that. So we want Mongo import. It takes a few arguments, dash dash db, which is going to be the name of our database. So let's call it, um, let's call it football db and then collection and this is going to be the name of the Mongo collections so it's going to be players 
and then file. And that's going to be literally the JSON file that we just created. So players.json. Like that. And this should create the three records for the each individual player in this file. And in addition, it should create the actual database itself called football db because we didn't actually create that database beforehand. So now that database should be created for us as well. So we should do the same thing except instead of players this time it's going to be teams and this should carry out the same process for the teams JSON so there we go so now we imported our three documents for players and three documents for teams so what we can do real quick is we can locally connect so Mongo and I believe it's called football DB so Mongo football DB so now I'm connecting to this database and I can show collections and we have players and teams and we can do DB players find and here we have our three players JJ Watt, Tom Brady, Eli Manning and then we can do teams Patriots, Giants, Texans so everything worked so what that means is, uh, and let's disconnect real quick, control C. So what that means is our Mongo database is now prepared with the same JSON objects that we used over here to seed the data so that we can now interface directly with the Mongo database for our REST API. So again, just if you recall, these are called resources. So we, we now have our resources set up in our database. Let's go ahead and get our database connection going. So head over to your app.js. And here is where we connect to our Mongo database in our web project. If you look at line 4, you'll see that this is where our app is initialized. But if you look down here on line 24, you'll see another app initialization option, which takes a config object. And inside the config object is where we establish the database connection. So we will be using this instead. So let's go ahead and get rid of line 4, because we're not going to use that. And instead, let's uncomment this, line 21. And we can remove all this. And so now we are going to initialize our data, our project using this config object. And inside the config object is where we establish our database connection, which we're doing here on line 7. Specifically, the URL is where we tell our project where the database is located. So we're going to comment that out, and instead we're going to add a new URL pointing to our local Mongo connection. So MongoDB localhost slash, and then the name of the database, which in our case is FootballDB, right here. So we want to do localhost and then FootballDB. And this will connect our project to our local, Mon whoops, our local Mongo instance, so that it will have access to this this data, the C data that we set up a moment ago. So we can go ahead and confirm that by also adding an on success callback. So let's do comma right here on success, and then console log football db connected and this on success callback will be invoked once the database connection is successfully established and this will be the error will be invoked if something goes wrong naturally so let's go ahead and test that so our database is still running in this tab and then over here we can do turbo dev server and this time we should see a callback whoops, head back to our root project, the root level of the project. So make sure you're in the root level. And we want to do turbo dev server and football db connected. So this worked. Everything is su successfully set up uh, with regard to our local database connection. So in our database, our local database, our local MongoDB also has some seed data that we set up a few moments ago. 
So now we're ready to go with the actual data from our database. So in the next video, what we're going to do is create our database schemas. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to go through that pretty quickly because that's well covered in the Mongo series, and then we're going to use that schema to make API requests inside of our API route. So all of this will be removed, and we will actually make the request from the database uh, itself. So hopefully you got all that working. Stay tuned for that, and I'll see you in the next video.